Ladies and gentlemen, we've made it all the way here to the European Grand Finals for the second cup of the summer season. It's going to be a rematch between Method Black and Zizon, two teams that did fight earlier in the day, and they had such a... I mean, it was a back-and-forth series, even though it was three to one. You know, Zizon, they started to figure stuff out with the Death Knight Warrior. Method Black, they started to look a little bit wavering, even in the LSD versus RMD matchup. And Zizon have just been getting better and better, tournament to tournament, game to game. These guys are looking like they could be the team to challenge Method Black, but obviously Method Black defending champions once again undefeated in series, qualifying through to the grand finals. It's going to be an uphill battle. My name is Healing Stat, Ben Ruki, Supertease, and Zika on the desk for this. And of course, now it is time to decide the champion of Europe for the second week. The final cup here of 8.1.5 before we move into the new meta of 8.2 next week. And I mean, I, I've got to ask for predictions. I think I know what you're all going to say, but let's start with you, Ven. Who do you think comes out on top in this series? I, I feel like you'd be wearing crazy pants to not go with Method <laughs> Black in this situation. I mean, they've just been so dominant literally only getting first and second in every cup this year and they haven't dropped a game in this or they've dropped one i guess against zizon and like you said zizon they have been getting a little bit better but i'm still not convinced still so close i'm still not convinced and i am really surprised with twitch chat going so much in favor of zizon not completely in favor of course but even that close is surprising to me so 45 percent of twitch chat according to elliot venruki vensal are wearing crazy pants in this situation as meta black were oh, the victors but the blind pick this is nice potentially you in can, favor uh, of zizon here you can tweet at us pictures of your crazy pants <laughs> sure <laughs> tweet at us uh, hashtag awc I, I don't know if that's a hashtag but we <laughs> just tweet at any of us with your crazy hashtag pants crazy we'll put it on pants. broadcast probably not um, but we are in if a they're good enough, here. if they're crazy If enough. they're good enough and they're suitable for broadcast. We have DK Warrior coming in from Zizon. We saw this matchup play out once in the previous series. And I mean, if this turns out as a victory for Zizon in this matchup consistently, there's a good chance this grand final could go all the way to game seven. I mean, it's likely to be the case, but it ha still has to beat it. I'm not certain if it can. I think that Method Black spent too much time leaving Nerd Rage open and on Warrior, he just carried the game. They're sapping Jamie, and they're going to start the fight on Nerd Rage this time around. So let's see what Nerd Rage does when he doesn't have as much freedom. Can he carry the team still? We'll have to see what he can do. Raikou kind of playing an interesting build. I didn't have a chance to talk about it the last time they were in this matchup, but for his max level 100 talent, he's actually playing Thermal Void. This isn't a talent we normally see, but I think Raikou, uh, he wants to be able to just deal with this damage as much as possible. I think if he did go for the Ray of Frost, it's more casted damage, but unfortunately he's being trained down the entire game. So not much of an opportunity. Instead, the Thermal Void is going to increase the duration of his Icy Veins by 10 seconds. And he can also extend his Icy Veins by casting Isolant. So you can get really long, 40 second long Icy Veins where you can play really aggressive on a Jamie on Nerd Rage. And I think it was an intelligent pick. The one thing I'd criticize though, if Raikou kind of realizes he's not able to get out a lot of damage. I'm not sure why he's playing the Deep Shatter to get additional Frostbolt damage. I think going for something like Temporal Shield would be a lot better. He could survive longer because it's no surprise Zizon, they have him as the main target. Nerd Rage running double time, dropping the Storm Bolt to get some extra mobility, trying to capitalize on what is going to be the weakness in this matchup against a Mage, getting some extra gap closers, certainly going to be advantageous to him on the Warrior here, but he's under fire a lot more than on Hook Point. He is the main focus of Method Black, very low on health here early on. Iron Park from Trainer is holding out, but still quite low. Nerd Rage, is he going to go into battle? He gets stunned, Smoke Bomb. Drainer's trying to get inside of the smoke bomb. Chaz is trying to cycle on him. Drainer denies it, but it's on to mission return. Nerd Rage has to evacuate. Drainer going to follow him with the wild charge. Beautiful coordination there from Drainer and Nerd Rage to escape to safety. Bit of a close call. A lot more pressure this game targeting down the warrior from Method Black. Yep, Jamie, I think he actually changed his race. He's playing Night Elf now. So it's an interesting choice by Jamie. He's going to be using that to try to avoid. Is he playing Night Elf? I, I guess he's playing Night Elf to avoid. Uh, some of the incoming Maledicts. Raikou going to be taking a little bit of damage right now. We'll have to see what exactly they can get done. And it looks like he's going to be playing that Night Elf Death Knight. Size on right now. They're in a stable position. Method Black seems to be putting a lot more pressure and attention onto Nerd Rage in this matchup. I think it's smart. That's the one thing they didn't do the last time they met in this Ooh. matchup. 
on hook point, and we really feel like Nerd Rage on the Warrior. I mean, that's one of the main reasons you don't see a Warrior, and people opt to play with a Windwalker Monk instead, is Nerd Rage doesn't really have much self healing, doesn't have the Expel Harm or Vivifies, doesn't have Death Strike or Soul Leech, and because of that, later on in the game, Nerd Rage just becomes such a vulnerability, but so far, Zizon's been able to keep him aggressive. This is interesting that uh, no member on the... This, I think this is the first time this has ever happened. No member on Zizon is running Gladiator's Maledict. Not a single player has the Gladiator's Maledict on their team. They're all running on use and the proc trinket just to get some extra main stats, some extra versatility, kind of maximize their damage per second. This is the first time that we've seen it. And no safeguard, maybe one safeguard on Drainer. Neither Jamie, yeah, Jamie doesn't look like he's running it either. Badge insignia for both the damage dealers. So Zizon really focused on just maxing out their sustained pressure, trying to win on mana or a kill potentially earlier on. An interesting strategy for an interesting composition that they're the only ones running between that Warlock Druid Shaman and now this Death Knight Warrior Druid. This is potentially throwing Method Black for a loop. Nerd Rage setting up for an Ice Block push there with a double Intimidating Shout. Unfortunately, not getting the ice block, but Chaz's Gladiator's Medallion is also a pretty good cooldown to get out of the way. Waz is going on a solo mission to try and kill Drainer in the back line. Raikou can't help him. Nerd Rage is blade storming. They're leaving Nerd Rage and Jamie just to have their way with Raikou. Drainer's going to jump to safety. That Chains of Ice making it impossible for Waz to continue the chase. Drainer's trying to find Chaz to stop him from drinking. Finds him, but Chaz looks for the Cyclone, gets it. Drainer's crowd controlled. Nerd Rage could be in a bit of trouble, so he goes in defensive stance, reduce some damage. Now chopping up Raikou, getting an ice block, and I mean, this is looking solid, I would say, overall. The only thing maybe not going in their favor is Drainer's mana at this point, but everything else, I would say that Zizon take game one, and like Healing Stat was saying, if they do, they'll have the swing match advantage for the rest of the season, or rest of the series, which means likely we go all the way to game seven, and likely they take it, which would be an impressive feat, and perhaps they're not wearing crazy pants. I'm looking forward to a game seven between these two teams. And just to sort of elaborate on what you were talking about with the Sinister Gladiator's badge and Insignia, both of those trinkets have versatility. So it's a lot of extra versatility that these guys are going to be able to use. And with Raikou being a Night Elf, he can already do a really good job negating the incoming Maledict. So it's a bit of a mind game there. Raikou playing Night Elf doesn't get any value with the Shadow Meld with Jamie and Nerd Rage both not playing Maledict. In addition, Jamie and Nerd Rage, they're going to have a little bit more defense and offensive punch with that on-use trinket. So I think it was a really intelligent decision. All right, let's see if it works out for them here in game number one. If it does, they, it could just take the entire series with the compositions that each team have respectively. Method Black are trying to throw a curveball. They're going after Drainer. Waz goes all in. Gladiator's Maledix activated. Is it going to be enough to take down Drainer? Can Method Black take the blind pick, the swing match advantage? Drainer holds on. Barely. Another Gladiator's Maledix incoming on the run. They dispel off the safeguard shield. Drainer's going to iron bark, but Waz is still just right on top of him. Vendetta ready and waiting to be popped at any moment. Waz could could take this game completely into his own hands. He catches Drainer out of form. Where is Adam? Why are they not going for the Vendetta? I'm very surprised to not see them just commit the Vendetta on that attack during the stun. Instead, they're trying to stop Jamie from denying the drink. Waz is focused on just preventing the mana regeneration stop, and they've done it. Chaz has significantly more mana moving into dampening. Yeah, but Raikou might be forced into his second ice block. There's the Iron Bark. Do they have the damage to push through? Sharpened Blade gets used by Nerd Rage, a very powerful ability for the Arms Warrior, reducing incoming healing. And that, with dampening, makes it really difficult for Chaz to keep him alive. Big attempt here over on a Drainer. Jamie backs him up with the anti-magic zone. That's no longer going to be available, but it's a fair trade for the Vendetta. Drainer gets caught into a Cyclone. He's low. Nerd Rage still chopping up Raikou. Is it going to be the second ice block? If they can force it out, it's going to be massive. Nerd Rage still on target. Big heals coming in from Chaz with that Innervate, making all of his healing spells free of charge. He's able to throw out those expensive heals. He tops off Raikou. Method Black completely reset the fight in terms of health. And now it's Drainer that's Oh, no! Big attack onto Drainer. Bit disrespectful, not using the Gladiator's Medallion. They grip Waz off the pillar, but he's got maneuverability with that sprint. He's right back on target. Drainers could be in trouble. Raikou blinks on top of him. Frozen Orb available if they just want to plant that right now and try and go for the kill. They got a 10 second window with no defense. Drainer gonna jump across the map, stopping Chaz from drinking and avoiding death at the same time. 
Good exchange there. They stunned Nerdrage, but I think that was more so to just peel him away. Waz was in a bit of trouble. Double Frost Nova. Nerdrage uses Avatar to break out of the root. I will say Nerdrage's usage of mobility in this matchup is on point. He's able to get a lot more uptime on the targets that he wants to be going after as a result. Definitely playing this warrior at a top tier level. We really haven't seen Arms Warriors at all in a tournament setting. Nerdrage is certainly showing their strengths here in the finals against Method Black. Yeah, a lot of damage being used by Nerdrage and Jamie, putting a lot of pressure on Method Black. Look at Waz, he doesn't have evasion, doesn't really have many defensives left to work with. And I think if Nerdrage and Jamie turn their attention onto Waz, they could easily take him down, especially if he's not prepared for it. We're at 21% dampening. Mana looking a little bit better for Chaz here, but I think that's kind of to be expected. Chaz looking for a drink as they make an attempt over on a Nerd Rage. Drainer caught in crowd control. And this is so good for Method Black. They've set up an opportunity where Chaz can get out of combat, completely reset his mana. He's going to be looking completely fine. Now Waz in a stun. Do they have the execute? Maybe Chaz left him a little bit too low for too long. Was he really doesn't have any defenses. Kidney shot over onto Nerd Rage. There's no trinket available for Nerd Rage. Blind onto Drainer. He trinkets out. He needs to keep Nerd Rage aggressive. They need to keep the damage and the pressure and the momentum on their side. If they lose that, Method Black is going to be in a commanding situation. I mean, they're very far behind on mana. They're going to have to win purely off crowd control and burst if they want to take this against Method Black. Chaz has secured a late game advantage by drinking frequently in the matchup. Perhaps Method Black can actually turn this game in their own favor. If they get the swing match advantage, then surely when we get to a game seven, they're going to be actually taking it. They go all in on Drainer. He's got double bark skin up, but it might not be enough. Raikou low at the same time trying to just finish the match. Drainer holds on. Nerd Rage is trying to close it. Raikou in trouble is forced into the second ice block. Drainer on the run. Waz in hot pursuit with that sprint. Drainer has to run for his life, but he can't get away from Waz. He needs to get away from Waz. War Banner drops to try and snipe the kidney shot, but Raikou kills it off. Not going to be soaking any stuns. Drainer has no mana, no health. All he's got is potentially stealthing away from the fight, but Waz Phantom dives him out. Uh -oh. Waz is now low on health, getting chopped up. Nerd Rage and Jamie just trying to end the game before Drainer falls. He's getting he's chopped. He's getting chopped. No evasion for six more seconds. Iron Bark might not be enough. Its defense is going to be fading, but now he'll have evasion in one second. One second on evasion. If Nerd Rage gets behind Waz or they stun Waz, then Waz dies. Nerd Rage is Cyclone. He can't execute. He's not going to trink it out. doesn't want to throw the game defensively, but maybe it would have been wise to just trink it at this point. Drainer, is he drinking? No, he's in stealth. He's attacking. He's got zero mana. Cold snap up and 12 for Raikou. 11 seconds for Raikou. 10 seconds. If he doesn't make it to that point, I actually think he's going to die. If they can stay on target, Nerd Rage should just go into battle stance, finish the game at this point. There's no reason not to. There's nothing left in the match to keep Jamie alive. We're at that close to 40% mark. Jamie is just a liability now, and it's likely to be that he is going to fall. Method Black take game number one. One absolutely close. I mean, that was about as close as it gets. You really felt like Waz could have fallen, Raikou could have fallen. But in the end, Method Black once again able to pull through the blind pick. I actually thought Zizon had won that blind pick based on the last series, an incredibly close game, but it does go in favor of the defending champions. Well, it's like I said as well, when they when we did see that series, it was super, super close it when was. they played out, and it was hook point. So it, it wasn't that surprising for me that Method Black would lock in the uh, Rogue Mage Druid, because if Zizon ends up locking in the Lock Shaman Druid, then all of a sudden they might have had themselves a really bad matchup. This still looked pretty winnable for Method Black, and you know, the big map certainly helped them out. Drainer almost went down earlier on in the match. Chaz, though, uh, managing to get away and get a drink, reset his mana, really, really was important for Method Black. And of course, uh, we saw Waz as well have a really close call, uh, but once he dropped to about 5 or 10%, his feint actually came back off cooldown. He survived a couple of seconds because of that. Then the iron bar came up. He survived an extra couple of seconds because of that. And then the evasion rotated back up. At that point, there wasn't really much that Zizon could do. And like you guys mentioned already, we're reaching that critical mass point where the DK just can't really self-sustain as well as he can in the earlier stages of the games. And they take down Jamie. Yeah, really well played by Method Black to kind of weather the storm in that situation. It was, I, we cannot stay how close that was for a first game of the grand final. Method Black will definitely have been shaking a little bit, but they'll also be happy to pull through with the victory because if this is a matchup on the small maps that can be won by Zizon, then Method Black, it's important to know, will have the advantage in terms of kind of counter picking and choosing the maps if we did potentially go all the way to a game seven. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, but I feel like for Method Black, they still have the opportunity to win 
on those smaller maps. So I'm kind of curious to see what exactly Zizon does. I think it's likely we go somewhere like Hook Point and we see that exact same matchup. But I think Method Black, now that they've had a little bit of time to feel out the composition, I mean, that game was really close. There was a lot of good moments for Zizon to potentially end the game. I still feel like it's very winnable for Method Black. Yeah, it does feel like it. And Method Black as well, is this a team that, you know, during the spring season, they played so much of the Death Knight Demon Hunter and then also a little bit Elemental Frost Mage. We didn't really see them playing Rogue Mage of any variant during the spring season. And if anything, that maybe came back to bite them at the spring finals because they found themselves ill-prepared for the US teams who were a little bit more aggressive, where a Rogue Mage of this caliber could have done well. I'm actually being told that they've won 81% of their games using the Rogue Mage Druid. So they are really back on form here. You, you can see it in these Cubs. They're almost going undefeated, even when Zizon throws the kitchen sink at them. Yep, everything except the kitchen sink, though. I think at this point, and Method Black have an option here. They could blind lock a different composition. I'm wondering if they do even fall back on maybe one of their melee cleaves on hook point. They could maybe even do a mana rift strategy against Zizon if they so please, but I think it's likely that we just see Rogue Mage from them the entire tournament, and then when Zizon sees Rogue Mage, they'll do Warrior Death Knight. If they don't know and they lock blind, they'll do Ellie Warlock. But because Method Black already beat the Warrior Death Knights, this could actually snowball out of control. This could possibly turn out to be a 4-1 score in favor of Method Black, assuming that the matchup keeps playing out the same way. But if Zizon stopped Chaz from drinking, then that situation where Waz is barely recovering, then Waz just dies. So it was still very close to call. Method Black are taking their time to lock in the composition. This makes me wonder if they're considering any other options. Yeah, Method Black are that sort of team, right? They're the sort of team that they like to be a bit tricky. If they think they are probably going to lose a map, then they will throw a curveball at you since it's a blind pick anyways. But not today. They do lock in the Rogue Mage Druid once again. Yeah, well, I think it's important as well uh, when you're up in the series and you're going to be playing on a small map where the Rogue Mage Druid isn't going to be as effective. That's a situation where you can experiment a little bit. The finals is a best of seven, so whoever gets four wins first is the winner. So uh, you have some leeway here if you are Method Black to uh, try out a different composition, maybe bring in Swapsy. Uh, however, of course, they're not going to be doing that. They're going to be locking in the Rogue Mage Druid. I expect to see the uh, Melee Cleave again with the DK uh, Warrior from Zizon, uh, pre uh, precisely as Venruki predicted. Yep, that's probably what we're expecting so smart. here. The map choice came <laughs> in. It's, it's like you've watched this before or something. Yeah, I think it would have been a surprise <laughs> to all of us. Yes, so we'll have to see if Zizon do follow the script here, which we have all been carefully choreographing by the sounds of things. Uh, and if Method Black, that would be the next thing, is if Method Black were to follow the script and actually then lose the game and take us in this kind of back and forth here in the grand finals. It's pretty, it's been pretty exciting to watch Method Black, honestly. Like, because wildcard gaming, I think they have faltered a little bit at the start of the summer season. It's it's fair to say that Method Black have essentially locked in their BlizzCon spot now, right? Like, I think they're a good 100, 120 points ahead on the standings before we even go into here, where they're likely to come first, maybe second, and Wildcard Gaming have come fifth. So these guys really are looking at BlizzCon now. So for 8.2, that's actually going to be a big thing in their stride. And it's probably going to let also a little bit of the steam and the pressure off the fact that they have, you know, essentially locked that in now. Yeah, I mean, things could obviously change, but with what we've seen this, what we've seen out of them so far this year, I think it's safe to say Method Black is in a very good position to qualify to BlizzCon off of points. I mean, what would have to happen essentially is Method Black would have to completely choke and just yep. not make... 8.2 would yeah. have to be a disaster. Yeah, they would just have to lose every game in 8.2, you know, get 7th, 8th in tournaments or wildcard gaming. We just have to win every single tournament. That would be a situation where we'd see wildcard gaming sort of catch up on points. And I think we all feel like that's probably really unlikely yep. with the type of team <laughs> Method Black is. I mean, they've just been so consistent. And for Method Black, it's got to feel good. They can go back to the Rogue Mage Druid, which is obviously something Waz and Raikou have been playing together for a really long time, bringing in Chaz on the Druid. We've been talking about how he's definitely one of the best players, best healers in Europe. And when you can play just one composition and beat you know, 90% of comps, it feels really good. You can put a lot of your eggs in one basket. They can put a lot of preparation into that Rogue Mage Druid. And obviously, we can see it's paying off for them quite a bit. Now, Zazon throwing them a bit of a curveball. I, I have to say, Nerd Rage on the Arms Warrior. He's putting on quite the show. 
we've kind of mentioned we haven't seen too much of Arms Warriors so far this year, but he's been holding it down. He's had a lot of pressure in this game, forcing Raikou defensive, lots of moments of opportunity on Waz, and I'm looking forward to seeing if he can get something done in this game. Yeah, whereas Method Black are looking great for BlizzCon qualification, of course, there's a lot of pressure on Zyzon. They really need to have a good summer, uh, summer season and ultimately summer finals because they're just so far behind on points. They really will need to be looking for those uh, kind of top two spots at the summer finals. But a good goal for that would be winning this tournament. If they win this tournament, they'll prove to be one of the top contenders in Europe. And not only that, they'll also make great strides in terms of getting the points they need to qualify for summer. Good map selection here for Zyzon on hook point, realizing that they lost that game because Chaz was able to drink and regenerate mana. Hook point is almost impossible to drink and regenerate mana, so makes sense. They want to go to the map to stop drinks, and this is the best one for that. Zyzon likely to put a point on the board here. Of course, I, don't, I can never count Method Black out, especially when they're running this mate, Rogue Mage Druid. They can turn the odds in their favor on a dime. Nerd Rage and Jamie crowd controlled up. They're going to use the Death Grip to pull Raikou back into the fight, but now he's going to use Shimmer away. Polymorph on Nerd Rage. This is to bait Trainer out of bear form. He's going to stun Waz before dispelling Polymorph so he doesn't get kidney shot out of bear form. Good awareness there on Drainer's part. Waz is going to switch targets, go after Nerd Rage, drop a smoke bomb. They're trying to get the Glider's Medallion from Nerd Rage with this, or maybe even a kill if they get proper cow control. Nerd Rage, an exposed weakness at this point in time. Die by the sword on such low health. Is he even going to stay alive through this? This is not the Vendetta. We did not see the anti-magic zone for the Icy Vein, so a bit of a cooldown mismanagement here from Zyzon. Now with no Die by the sword, Vendetta is a lethal cooldown that Waz could pull at any moment. Yeah, Vendetta's really scary if they can actually manage to find an opportunity. If they get crowd control and trainer, he's got no trinket, they can get really aggressive. Raikou with the Icy Vein still looking to get some damage rolling, but not able to find it. Growth Silence over onto Drainer. Waz looking to set up Drainer at this point in the game. Drainer with a nice bash, manages to escape from Waz. He just needs to get out of line of sight, but he's left Waz behind. Waz could potentially go for a re-stealth right now. Doesn't look like he's gonna go for it. Just gets the kidney out of the cyclone. Big attempt here by Method Black. What are they gonna be able to get done? Drainer, no trinket, uses the iron bark, not committing the bark skin. This is a bit of a scary moment, but Drainer does manage to hold on. Anti-magic zone from Jamie should be enough for him to survive this attempt. And I like this effort from Method Black. Go after Drainer a lot more in this matchup. Set up these attempts. Drainer has no trinket. He's got no iron bark. It's gonna be difficult for him to recover his hit points with wads all over him. Luckily for him, he still has the bark skin, but there's not too much left for Nerd Rage and Jamie to really help him out with. This is also the weakness of hook point is that you can rush healers down, so Method back Black looking to exploit that. Here with Blind on Drainer, he can't heal. Waz needs to try and sap, but he can only use Shadow Meld to get it. It doesn't look like it's either available or it got disrupted. Drainer manages to escape now to safety. Nerd Rage charging towards Raikou, switching into defensive stance. Although during his Blade Storm might not have been necessary, we do see Waz stunning up Drainer. Raikou's too far away, though. He's not going to be able to get there in time. Nerd Rage is going to go for the double intimidating shout. Looks like they may want to target down Waz. Maybe Chaz, actually. Zyzon are mixing it up, trying to go after the healer a little bit. He's looking choppable. He's trying to jump away to the mage, but he's still low on health, trying to get away with the sprint. Nerd Rage charges him, now stunned. Waz going to peel for Chaz. And it looks like he's going to stay alive. Nerd Rage feeling some pain here from the frozen orb of Raikou, and now cycloned on Iron Bark. Well-timed Cyclone by Chaz, but if they don't have any follow-up on Drainer, it's going to be non-consequential in the near future. Nerd Rage is going to recover. Both teams stabilize. I'm trying to take stock of cooldowns. I would say that Zyzon are behind on this point in terms of cooldowns, but ahead on mana, which means it's still an even match. Chaz is around 60% mana, actually 50% mana. Drainer has a massive lead in that regard, so if they can slow down Chaz from ever recovering his mana, that's an opportunity for Zyzon. Big attempt here on Nerd Rage. Once again, bash from Chaz. Do they have follow-up crowd control? Doesn't look like it. Waz backs him up with a growth silence on the Drainer. Now it's Raikou that's in trouble. This could be the first ice block easily. Iron Bark looking to deny Chaz, just spamming out heals with Innervate. Can play very inefficient, but lots of healing throughput with those two cooldowns combined. Raikou gets topped off. And now Method Black, they're completely stable. A little bit of pressure here over onto Waz. And I like what Nerd Rage and Jamie are doing. They're putting pressure onto Raikou, forcing out lots of heal over time effects, and then going after Waz, forcing Chaz to put his attention onto him. And that way they can get Chaz out of mana a lot quicker in a matchup like this. Nerd Rage under pressure. Let's see what they can get done here. Chaz in crowd control. Raikou the target. Nerd Rage blade storming over. Trying to connect to Raikou. 
Waz trying to peel Nerd Rage away. Nerd Rage doesn't seem to care that Waz is attacking him at this point in time. Mana still establishing a lead now. The cooldowns are actually in favor of Zyzon. I would say that they are in a lead, which is a bit expected here on their best map in this specific matchup. If they are unable to win on hook point, I am uncertain that they will be able to win on any map with this composition. Method Black potentially leveling up their play here in the Grand Finals, only dropping one game to this composition, which could have been just a surprise factor more than anything. They're looking solid on the Grand Arena. Drainer, Nerd Rage charging in onto Raikou. Raikou gonna be trinketing out of the stun and trying to get to safety, putting down that Frozen Orb and Blizzard, trying to kite through it, but Chains of Ice equally effective at snaring Raikou. He blinks, but he gets Ursula's Vortex back in. Nice play there by Drainer. Nerd Rage cycloned on his Sharpened Blade at low health. It's been unfortunate for Nerd Rage. Drainer, what are you gonna do at the end of this? Are you gonna go for a drink? Doesn't look like it. Chaz gets gripped into the fight, looking to deny the drinks there. Pressure onto Raikou. Ironbark may not be enough. The strategy of not running those Gladiator Maledict trinkets or the safeguards is definitely allowing the Death Knight and Warrior a lot more sustained pressure. Although at the same time, I wonder if they were running the Gladiator's Maledicts, if they could just end the game during those burst windows. In the meantime, Drainer's crowd controlled. Nerd Rage is falling behind. Has to trade a lot of defensive cooldowns. He's running an Azerite trait, so when he uses Avatar, he gets Ignore Pain, which is a slight shield effect which allowed him to a little bit of extra time for trainer to sit through that crowd control but they had to expend a lot of defensive cooldowns to survive and now Mesa black have an opening nerd rage charging over to raikou looking to slow him down get some damage rolling he's been on the defensive for so long in this game and that's one of the weaknesses of the arms warriors is they are susceptible to being trained down and if you have to sit in defensive stance your offensive capability gets limited quite a bit in a matchup like this. 10% dampening. Chaz behind on mana for the first time in this game. A nice interrupt coming in from Raikou. What are they going to be able to get done? Kleptomania Spellsteal on Nerd Rage as he's looking to run behind the pillar. Like a spinning top. Does manage to get out of line of sight. Was the kidney shot. Trying to get some damage rolling. Drainer into a blind. Doesn't trink it out. He doesn't have a trinket. He goes into a bash. Is there any follow-up? Can Raikou get there for a polymorph? Unfortunately not. Wild charge over to Nerd Rage. Gets out of line of sight. And now Waz deciding he doesn't want to stay behind the pillar for too long. He needs to get in line of sight of Chaz so he can start getting some heals. All right, let's see if Chaz can stabilize him. Waz stunned up. Nerd Rage going after him, then switching targets. But Drainer's in a polymorph. Nerd Rage doesn't have much defense. He's going to heroic leap to safety at the pillar, waiting for Drainer to get out of crowd control. Method Black aren't going to chase. They're going to change targets instead, going after Jamie. They get Icebound Fortitude and. The longer we go into dampening, the more vulnerable the Death Knight becomes. We've seen time and time again around that 30 to 40% mark that the Death Knights just fall over. So if Chaz maintains mana, which he has, the advantage that Zyzon wanted on the map is now lost. They're going to have to kill the mage quickly because I don't think they're winning this on mana. And if it goes any deeper, Jamie is just going to fall over. Nerd Rage is also vulnerable because he has no defensive cooldowns. This is not looking good for Zyzon. This actually is looking like it could be a 4-0 now for Method Black. I mean, at this point, at the black, they do have a lead, but Raikou's still under pressure, and really anything could happen. They could make a good attempt over onto Waz, take him down. Raikou could fall as well. They just need some crowd control onto Chaz. Nice death grip coming in from Jamie, denying the Cyclone. Nerd Rage is going on Waz, and Jamie's sitting on Raikou. So, a bit of a split strategy coming in from Zyzon. A big attempt over onto Raikou as he gets interrupted. He's trying to kite away. Is he going to have to ice block? That's the question. Chaz gets interrupted. That was a nice interrupt there by Jamie, but buys him enough time to get the Iron Bark onto Raikou, and he should survive. Now it's Nerd Rage that could be under fire. Drainer's man is not doing well. Chad's able to sneak away and drink earlier on in the game. Really put Method Black in a commanding situation where they are just way ahead. Way ahead indeed at this point. Vindruki, Method Black are looking solid to go undefeated in the finals if this Warrior Death Knight composition doesn't work out. And it's looking like that's going to be more and more the case for Zyzon here. Drainer interrupted. Nerd Rage low on health. Is he going to have to use the Die by the Sword to survive? He's trying to hold out, but Drainer's blinded. He pre iron barked it. That may be enough. Waz is trying to sap, but that means he's not attacking. He gets the sap. He's trying to get back on the target, but Raikou is getting torn apart right now. Waz is low on health. Dampening starting to backfire as well for Method Black with two targets under pressure. Nerd Rage trying to pull off the miracle here. Sharpened Blade is active. That's going to reduce a lot of healing. They switch over to Waz, but Nerd Rage is still so much lower. He gets cycloned on 10% health. 
Chaz is moving over, looking for the game-winning clone onto Drainer. Can he land it? Nerd Rage leaps over to stop it, but now he's stunned. He's not able to. Die by the Sword can't be activated in a stun. They're one second away. Nerd Rage holds out. Rally and Cry boosting his health for a temporary amount of time as he clings to life next to Drainer. Drainer trying to give him the hug of life, but it's not looking too good as he's interrupted on his heel. Waz is waddling his way over to try and finish the job. Drainer connects one regrowth, but now he has to deal with Waz potentially interrupting him. Nerd Rage stunned. Big damage here from Waz, but Iron Bark is active and likely to deny the kill on Nerd Rage. Chaz is actually now totally tapped on mana. Perhaps an opportunity for Zyzon, but it's a slim one. Waz looking for a re-stealth, unfortunately not able to find it. Chaz not doing well on mana either, and Raikou only has one ice block left. If Zyzon can start developing some momentum in this matchup, they could close it out. Chaz with the Innervate trying to keep Raikou alive. Iron Bark as well, but he gets interrupted. Now Raikou's in a full stun. It's Ice Block overlapped with Iron Bark. This is the moment that Zyzon needed in this matchup to come back in this series. Can they take Raikou down? Preemptive anti magic zone to deny a lot of the incoming damage. Drainer in a polymorph into a cyclone. Nerd Rage in a lot of trouble. Jamie trying to keep him alive with that anti magic zone, but it's Raikou that's in a lot of trouble. He blinks away. Nerd Rage is all over him. Sid, do you think he's going to be able to survive? Uh, I don't think so with that Cyclone beautifully timed. Jamie has to solo Raikou and Nerd Rage somehow has to evacuate the situation or just go for the kill. I think that's the only option is to just go for it. Dampening is too high. You're not going to recover. There's no mana left for either team. It's do or die. Whoever Fear. maxes out their damage, whoever maxes out their crowd control is going to win in this position. They've got Raikou locked down in midfield. Chaz can't heal. Drainer's tossing in Solar Wrath. Is Solar Wrath actually going to kill him? They need to put him in execute range for Nerd Rage. They can chop him up and end the game. Uh -huh. Raikou is ultimately going. Nerd Rage triggers to kill him, but doesn't get it. He's stunned on 1%, but Nerd Rage gets there. And finally, the satisfying sound of an execute. Nerd Rage is all smiles there towards the end, tying it up one to one. Yep, tied up one to one. Well played by Zyzon, winning on their map choice with their composition pick here. It was so close though. I think Drainer actually had an excellent end to that game. I think he duked the blinks, yes, with his tranquility. Otherwise, surely Nerd Rage would have died. There was a lot of times where we were saying surely Nerd Rage should have died, but he doesn't, and they managed to pull through with the kill on Raikou. Well, I guess we found out why Method Black doesn't go on the Warrior. Uh, it seems like Nerd Rage is just unkillable because this guy, I counted him dead a whole bunch of times, uh, specifically when Drainer trinketed outside of a blind, and then he got blind sap. Nerd Rage was already low. He gets the preemptive iron bark on the blind. Speaking of preemptive iron barks, he got another one right there as well on that bash. Nerd Rage caught up in a stun lock, but he's going to be able to survive. They get the fear. They survive long enough to get Chaz completely out of mana. And then here we're gonna see Drainer push in, try to extend the CC chain here. A couple of solar rats as well here. And now finally they're reconnecting over onto Raikou. Chaz, uh, what is he gonna do? You know, there's a full uh, iron bark there, but it's not gonna be enough uh, considering he just can't get the heals out. Jamie as well doing an excellent job on that DK, using his pet interrupt there at the end, cross kicking him as well with that mind freeze, and they managed to tie up the score. Yeah, they tie up the score. We had an all-tied ball game here in the Grand Finals. One to one. There's a good chance, of course, the TSG will have to be benched in favor of Jamie coming in on that Elemental Shaman for the next game as they have the advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. What comes next may shock you. Ladies and gentlemen, it tied up here in the Grand Finals. This is, of course, the second cup of the summer season, the European Grand Finals. And then after this, we hop straight into North America where we'll have The Move, we'll have Method Orange, and then we'll have Cloud9 going up against the boys as well. So we've got some fantastic series uh, coming up after this Grand Finals as well. So stick with us for those. The Grand Finals are tied up, and both these teams, we've been talking about it. You know, who is going to challenge Method Black for that top spot in Europe? The only team, honestly, that has done a good job of that has been Zyzon and Zyzon actually did blind lock in the Death Knight Warrior Resto Druid. They want to see what Method Black can throw at this on the bigger map, and Method Black will answer with the Resto Druid Windwalker Frostmage. So, what do we think about this from Zyzon Zico? I want to get your take on it. Do you think uh, that this is a smart play just to see what the counter pick is, or would you have rather them go for the Lock Shaman Druid matchup? Well, we've seen how the Lock Shaman Druid matchup plays out now uh, multiple times, you know, seeing how these guys faced off earlier on. So, I think that this is a pretty intelligent thing 
think Forza is on to do. Uh, just pick it, even on a large map. Uh, worst case, you go against the Rogue Mage Druid. It was a closer game than any of the Lock Shaman Druid games were against the RMD. Or you might force Method Black completely off the RMD and into something like the Windwalker Mage, where potentially you can punish a, a mistake or two. Do you, do you think also, maybe I, I'll open this up to the desk, Obviously, it's a big map coming in here from Metha Black. Would it have potentially been an option for them to take away one of the smaller maps now that they have the composition advantage here? Maybe. Um, I or think... do you think they'd have the confidence in the matchup, perhaps? Yeah, maybe not. I'm, I'm not sure. I think Metha Black, certainly on this map, in this situation, they have a big advantage. Yep. Uh, I feel like the Windwalker Monk is going to provide them so much more defense um, in terms of the Ring of Peace. You have Tiger's Lust that he can assist Raikou with. Then you have the Turbo Fist, which is a massive snare. If he wants to, he can play Grapple Weapon. So it's a lot of tools that Waz has on the Windwalker Monk that he doesn't necessarily have on the Rogue, which makes it really difficult for Jamie and Nerd Rage to actually stay on target and get out a lot of damage. And Waz on the Windwalker Monk isn't going to be a good target either. We saw in the previous game, they actually went after Waz a few times on the Rogue, but on the Windwalker Monk, I, I feel like he's almost immortal in this particular matchup. Yeah, he's going to have... <laughs> imagine, like, trying to be an arms warrior catching a Windwalker Monk. That would be quite quite the travesty. So, <laughs> Waz should, should be just fine walking around on that um, Monk. But Raikou still will be a vulnerable target. Do you actually think that this is a complete counter matchup for Method Black? Because when I look at it on paper, it's kind of similar to the Rogue Mage Druid, or...? Uh, you I think it's going to be much better? I think better? it's better in the I think it's, I think it's better think in it's every way. Definitely better? Okay. Yes. Okay, so Method Black, maybe they just have the complete think... counter pick on the bigger map. The only other comp that I w was maybe anticipating would be Elemental Shaman Frost Mage. We've seen Arms Warriors in North America, and this is probably why everyone stopped playing Arms Warrior, was Omnivore versus that composition, <laughs> where he didn't hit anything for, I feel like, 10 minutes straight with the Elemental Shaman and the Mage mobility, the constant stun pressure. It was a very good counter into the Arms Warriors, so maybe we see that in the future if the Windwalker Frost Mage doesn't work. Although, if it doesn't work, they're going to lose their swing match advantage, so this is a big deal. They need this composition to work while they still have the advantage. Otherwise, Zizon could flip the entire series on its head and have that advantage in their own favor. Yeah, I mean, this is a big game. Let's not uh, throw away the fact that this is the grand finals. You know, the winner of this gets the lion's share of the $10,000 today. They also get the most points going into the summer finals. For Method Black, the summer finals are essentially on lockdown. They're looking fantastic, as they did during spring. But Zizon, a win here would be fantastic for these guys. It would put them guaranteed second place in the European scene for this season and give them big confidence strides going into patch 8.2 and going into the summer finals themselves which they will need to do well in that finals to qualify to blizzcon so it's still a long road here for zizon um but obviously they're at a disadvantage having lost that nagrand game and if they can't win nagrand against meta black it's so difficult because this team has so many different compositions they'll throw at you it's it's one of those situations where if you don't win that blind pick it's almost impossible to beat them yeah, and which on which is particularly unfortunate for Zizon because I actually feel like they won the blind pick. That was a matchup yeah. that they probably should have won. It's not the most one-sided matchup, but that was their best chance, their best opportunity, and unfortunately it didn't work out for them. So now they're in this situation where Method Black, they do have this advantage. Of course, Zizon could win this game. I think it's really unlikely given these matchups, but there is the opportunity. We don't really see too many Arms Warrior Death Knights play at this high of a level like we're seeing from Zizon here today. And I mean, this is a composition we've seen Drainer and Nerd Rage play together before. In the past, it was with Cervantes. Today, it's with Jamie, and they found a lot of success. They won a cup with it. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a few different Death Knight compositions over the AWC this year, specifically the Windwalker Death Knight and the Demon Hunter Death Knight. Both of those have been successful, but Zizon has own, been the only team running this Warrior Death Knight composition, and they make it work with their own flavor here. But Method Black, obviously, with the counter pick and the large map choice, looking to go 2-1 up in the series. All right, let's see if Zizon can do it. If they can beat Method Black on their counter pick, then the swing match will turn in their favor. If they can't, then this is likely to continue penduluming, oh, is that a word, all the way to game <laughs> seven. Sweet and if, if that is the case, they will have to find a different composition to blind lock, but they've had enough of running the Warlock Druid. Uh, Shaman into Rogue Mage Druid. They've had enough of it. They'd much rather see how this matchup fares, but I feel like it's going to be more of the same 
Although maybe Nerd Rage's usage of mobility could be the X factor for them. Maybe the fact that they don't run the Gladiators Maledicts, I'm going to double check that they aren't in this specific matchup, could be a, a, a reason why they can find victory here. Looks like they're not running the Gladiators Maledicts again, or at least not on Nerd Rage, so still playing for that strategy. Actually, there is one. Jamie is running it, which makes me wonder if Drainer is also running it. Drainer is running it as well, but Nerd Rage isn't. So Nerd Rage gets some extra versatility as opposed to the offense of the Gladiators Maledict, and the Warrior likely to talk target before dampening, so he is going to be taking more damage overall in the game. Makes sense that he would want to max out his versatility. He's also running versatility on his gear, although not on all pieces of gear. Actually, only on a couple. He's kind of mi mixing both. No, sorry. I'm looking at, looking at Drainer here. He is maxing out haste and versatility, so Nerd Rage is anticipating that he will be the target. He wants to reduce as much damage on himself as possible in the build that he's running. Raikou set up on in a three versus one situation by Nerd Rage. Ursul's Vortex in. Drainer going for a Gladiator Maledic push, Raikou Shadow melts it. And the thing is, when you're only running two Gladiators Maledics, the healer can dispel one, and the DPS member can use a Rachel to prevent the second one. So I'm not really sold on only running two Gladiators Maledics. I think it's either three Maledics or none. They go for the second one, but it's dispelled instantly by Chaz, so no benefit really there. There's a lot more pressure than I anticipated from Zyzon here in game number three, though, which is showing promise. Yeah, they have some damage over onto Waz, but the problem is when he wants to, he can run away a very slippery target, especially if they focus on Waz. Raikou's going to be able to free cast out Polymorphs, as well as a lot of consistent damage with the Frostbolt. So it's a little bit scary if they put too much attention over onto Waz, but you can't really blame them. Nerd Rage is having a really difficult time. I think this is probably one of the most difficult matchups you could possibly play in as an arms warrior. You're chasing a Frost Mage with a Windwalker Monk, just spamming Turbo Fist and just Sable on you, you're getting Polymorph, you're getting Nova. Nerd Rage has been able to put out good pressure so far, but it's just, it's an uphill battle, certainly. Drainer taking a little bit of damage as Waz puts some attention onto him. Raikou with a nice Polymorph on Jamie. It just seems like Method Black in this matchup, they have a lot more control over the game. I think it's also important to note the differences in Druid builds. I know some people were wondering, but at the moment, Nerd Rage in a bit of trouble. I wanted to explain something there, but he could actually go down this composition that Method Black brought in Game 3, doing a lot of damage. Even despite having Iron Park, Nerd Rage may fall. He's going to use Gladiator's Maledict, that Rallying Cry about to fade. Drainer stabilizes him with a Swift Mend. But there are two main builds for Restoration Druid in terms of stats. One is when you're playing Feral Affinity, you go Haste Versatility. The versatility increases your damage, increases your healing, and reduces the damage you take. It doesn't increase your healing as significantly as Mastery, but because of all the drawbacks of Feral Affinity, it shores up some of the weaknesses. So often we see Drainer running that Feral Affinity, and these stats benefit him the most when running that Affinity. Whereas Drainer, or Chaz, on the other hand, is not running the Feral Affinity, and he's focused only on Haste and Mastery. And Mastery will be higher overall health per second, but does make him a little bit more vulnerable to being targeted. But with a Mage and a Windwalker on his team, they're really not going to be able to spend a lot of time on him, so he can get away with running the maxed out stats for healing per second. Drainer has to go for more so the versatility build, so he takes less damage and does more damage. In this position, Waz is a bit of a target. Grip towards and away from Drainer. Waz is actually trying to kill Drainer, which is interesting. Uh, we have seen in the North American region that the Windwalker Mage is fully capable of killing a Druid. I believe we watched Storm versus Method Orange. They mirrored his Windwalker Mage. It actually ended up being a Druid race. So Drainer is just going to die. Big burst window there for Method Black. I was not anticipating them to close the game out that quickly, but that is certainly a strategy they could look to employ, catching Drainer off guard in game three. Big touch of death. Yep, that's, I guess that's one of the other things the Windwalker does bring, the touch of death. You know, it's a one and a half minute cooldown, correct? So it lines up off the trinkets, unlike two minutes. Line. It is two, two minutes. minutes or so. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's two minute cooldown, but if you see if you don't respect the damage, then you will end up falling in that situation. Drainer unable to answer, and Method Black actually with a quite convincing and a very fast win here in game three. Yeah, and the, that kind of raises one of the questions here. How good do you guys think Windwalker Mage Druid would be into the spellcast cleave that Zazen's been running with the Ellie Warlock? 
because if that's also a good matchup, then they can just blind lock this for the rest of the series. And we're gonna take a look at exactly what happened here. So Drainer is running the Relentless Talent, which of course means that he cannot drink it out of these sticky situations here. And we see, you know, Nerd Rage been the target for the majority of the game. Just Method Black playing a pretty controlled match so far. They had a really close attempt on Nerd Rage earlier on in the match. And then Drainer here, I think he just gets punished, honestly, here for being too aggressive. Gets caught up in the middle of the map. There is a nice uh, little attempt there with the bash. They force out the anti-magic zone as well as the bark skin. And then as this defense fades, I believe Waz is going to activate that touch of death right there. And then nice ice snow there from Raikou as well to keep the target kind of in place. Nerd Rage cross crowd control wasn't able to do anything about it. And since Drainer didn't actually have any damage reduction there, no iron bark and no bark skin, the touch of death just explodes. Yeah, uh, what do you think about the Relentless Talon? Do you think this is actually a little bit disrespectful from Drain to run that, or would you also run it just because of the amount of crowd control in Method Black? Well, there's a lot of instant crowd control in Method Black as well, so even if you avoid a lot of the polymorphs, you can still get paralyzed into a bash, into a cyclone, and that's plenty of time to kill somebody, especially when dampening is, you know, in the game. So uh, I feel like it, it always has this risk when you run it. Like, if someone executes a really nice swap to you, you can potentially just die immediately. Uh, I think that they just over responded to that particular bash uh, swap there. They used, you know, all of the uh, drainers damage reduction and they used the anti-magic zone. Maybe just the anti-magic zone would have been enough to kind of weather that storm and then he could have saved the bark skin and survived the touch of death. But overall, I think, uh, I don't know, it might be necessary to actually run it. Yeah, it's an interesting discussion. Obviously, one of the things Drainer likes to say whenever his team makes any mistakes whatsoever was there's a little bit of feeding going on in that situation. Maybe too much overaggression uh, scores Method Black. Another point on the board in this grand final. 2-1 it now stands. But of course, now it means the map choice goes over to Zizon. They take us to a lovely small map. Method Black have to choose a composition that Zizon can counter. And I mean, Method Black, they're not necessarily forced to lock in the Rogue Mage. Maybe they do go for the Windwalker Mage or some other blind pick here. I kind of feel like they are forced to lock in the Rogue Mage at this point. They have a good shot against the Arms Warrior uh, Death Knight, which is what Zizon's been running. Zico kind of asked about the Windwalker versus Rogue in this matchup, and I feel like when I play Windwalker Monk, playing against high armor targets is something that makes me really sad. So the Elemental Shaman <laughs> and surprisingly, the Destruction Warlock has really high armor and you don't have the same kind of lockdown and assassination Rogue has. First of all, you don't have the Garrote Silence. You don't have a low cooldown Kidney Shot. Your Leg Sweep is a minute cooldown. So it's much longer. It's a lot less control of the matchup overall. And I feel like it allows Zizon to get a lot more momentum in the matchup. And plus, yeah, you just your damage is going to be lower on the Windwalker Monk until maybe a li little bit later on in the game. I guess it can start adding up, but I feel like it's a lot more unstable than the Rogue Mage matchup, so no surprise. I think Method Black, they will be locking in that Rogue Mage Druid. Zizon, I mean, at this point, it feels obvious what they're going to run. It's going to be the Warrior Death Knight Restoration Druid once again, and against the Assassination Rogue, it's a lot better of a matchup. Well, one of the things I do want to point out, because uh, when Zizon won the second game of this series, and it's a discussion we've had a couple of times on the desk, Raikou was not running the Temporal Shield, this defensive talent that basically heals you up when you take damage. What do we think about this? Because I know both I you mages overall have been pretty, you know, I, I mean, I personally feel like, I don't know how Zico feels, but I feel like Temporal Shield is literally one of the best defensive cooldowns in the entire game. And when you're a mage, when you have that, you feel very safe. And when you're the main target and the main condition for you to lose is you dying, like, I just don't understand in what world you wouldn't want that. I mean, I think he's opting for concentrated coolness, and I mean, that does give you some options. He was running Deep Shatter. Yeah, Deep Shatter. So he's going for a build. What makes no sense to me is Raikou's going for a build where he's basically saying, I'm not going to get to cast. He's going Thermal Void. I think he's going the talent where every time you Isolate, it builds up more damage, so he drops the Ebon Bolt, as well as the uh, extra chance to get Fingers of Frost. Basically, he's going for all instant cast damage, yet he's still holding on to the Deep Shatter talent, which to me makes no sense. I would rather just have Temporal Shield. You live for a lot longer. It's going to be less taxing on Chaz's mana, and I just think you take away a lot of the pressure points Zizon has available. Okay, so a potential advantage that uh, we could see Method Black taking could be just a couple of talent points uh, changed on the mage, but Zizon obviously will lock in this TSG matchup once again and look to try to tie the series here, Seth. Yeah, and if they can't, then I think Method Black may walk away with the rest of the series, although Zizon found victory on hook point and Dalaran is a similar map, although 
not identical, of course. You can more easily drink due to the line of sight on the Z-axis, and it's just a much wider map than Hook Point, so the distance is bigger to close. If Chaz is able to drink, reset mana, then I think that Method Black will win this, similarly to Nagrand Arena. But if he's not able to, then I expect Zyzon to eventually overwhelm, although it will be close. Yeah, I mean, it's going to end up being close. It's, every single same game of this series has been pretty close. Actually, in the upper finals, I think the Lock, Shame, and Druid was getting a little bit closer against the Rogue Mage uh, for Zyzon as well. So they do have a few options here as we do continue into the series. Of course, this is a best of seven series, guys, so uh, it doesn't mean that we're on match point here. They need four wins to win this series. Method Black are 2-1 up in the series, but uh, of course, Zyzon looking to tie it up here. This is their composition pick as well as their map pick, so they have the advantage and they need to win this one, honestly, if they want to have a chance in this finals. All right, let's see if they can pull it off here. I'm curious if they're going to change back to no Gladiator Maledic Trinkets. That was the most interesting build choice, on, in my opinion, or if they run triple. It looks like they might be running triple, maybe? I'm looking at their gear right now. It looks like they've got three equipped 10 seconds before we get into the game, so that Gladiator's Maledict is going to add a lot of momentum for big pushes, and I am interested to see how this matchup plays now that we see them all running the Gladiator's Maledict trinket, Ben. Yeah, I mean, it is going to give them an extra offensive push that they can make on Raikou. Of course, he is playing that Night Elf Racial, and also with the reduction in versatility, I mean, 200 versatility, Definitely adds up on the Nerd Rage. He's going to be taking a lot more damage in this game if they decide to go after him. And it looks like that is going to be their main focus. I could getting some damage out right now onto Jamie, onto Nerd Rage. What are they going to be able to get done? Kitty shot onto Nerd Rage. But Drainer counter bash onto Raikou. Heat Drink gets out, wants to keep the aggression rolling. One Maledic flies over onto Raikou. Shadow Melt. Are they going to commit the next two? I feel like they have to use all three in succession to get any value out of them. Yeah, they will have to coordinate three in a row. One to deal with Shadow Meld, one to deal with Dispel, and then one to get a cooldown or get a kill. If they can rotate those three Gladiators Maledicts for big pushes on the Mage, this is certainly a win condition that Sizon can utilize. Jamie getting burnt here early on. Drainer tries to sustain with Iron Bar, but it's now Cycloned at very low health. Are Method Black going to win this game in seconds? If they switch the crowd control over, it could just be game over. Drainer's trying to sit blind, but Chaz is right on top of him, bashes his trinket. Waz's Chains of Ice can't connect. Jamie's looking like he's going to be able to maybe not stabilize. He's going to duck for cover around the boxes. Any Magic Shield going to soak up the Glyre's Maledict trinket. Now Jamie going back onto target, stunning up the healer, trying to pressure Raikou. Get some momentum for his team. Sharpened Blade, battle stance from Nerd Rage. They're leaving Nerd Rage open again, and I don't think that this is a player you want to leave open very long. Big heal from Chaz stabilizes him for now. I'm just curious to see how Method Black play around Nerd Rage because him and Battle Stance is wreaking havoc. Yeah, a lot of damage over on the Waz as well. He has the Evasion, he's getting low. Doesn't want to mess around, what is he doing? Evasion comes out, Cloak of Shadows as well. That was way too close. If he got caught in a, uh, an execute there, the game was just over. Waz literally dancing with death, using his evasion, does manage to survive, but at the expense of every single defensive cooldown. And now, Method Black, they're in a vulnerable position. All right, Method Black in a vulnerable position early on here against Zyzon. Zyzon, the only team really to be able to even take games off Method Black so far in the summer season. They're looking to be like an impressive force for the overall season. I'm curious to see what 8.2 brings in regards to changes in compositions and strategies, which teams will be able to adapt on the fly and pick them up the fastest because there's going to be a lot of cups, four cups, in fact, on that patch. So more cups on that patch than this. The significant amount of points to be earned on a completely, almost entirely different game at that point. So there's going to be big, big opportunities for new teams that come in as well as opportunities for teams that have been competing with maybe strategies that aren't the best. Waz in trouble. He's isolated. Drainer's trying to chase him down. Chaz is trying to get back to him. Waz actually mounting up. Raikou getting owned on a swap. Mana is not looking good for Method Black. This is a solid game from Zyzon, although I'm wondering if it's attributed to the targeting again for Method Black. We finally see them going on to Nerd Rage instead of Jamie, forcing him into that defensive stance and limiting the warrior, but Nerd Rage doesn't care. He's going to battle stance. He's trying to end this. The triple stun lock was trying to take him down, but Iron Bark is too much. They're going to switch targets. While they switch targets and had pressure, Drainer was drinking. Good response by Zyzon. Chaz now sees that. He's trying to drink. Jamie's waddling over to try and stop that as soon as possible, but Chaz is now in stealth. He gets sniped by the Death and Decay. Interrupt onto the Cyclone. 
Beautifully done there from Jamie, stopping the drink and preventing himself from being crowd controlled. And now Zizon have the mana lead. Yeah, big damage over on Araku as well as Waz. Chaz way behind on mana. He has the Innervate rolling. He's trying to top off the rest of his team. Is he going to be able to do it? Everyone from Zizon completely healthy at this point. And I really expected Method Black to have more pressure rolling onto Nerd Rage. They're having the Polymorph from up, play a little bit safe in this situation. Raku looking to get some aggression rolling, but Nerd Rage just isn't taking any damage. Still on top of Raku. Big attempt now over onto Drainer. Do they have the damage to follow it up? Unfortunately, Waz gets death gripped away by Jamie. Really good backup. And now it's Raku who's on the defensive. He gets interrupted on Frost, forced to go into the ice block. And that's one of those situations where if he had Temporal Shield, he might have been able to hold on to that Ice Block. That could have been a situation indeed. And now Chaz is very far behind on mana. How long can they keep it up? I'm thinking we're going to a Game 5 here, but will Method Black be able to close out the series? They can rely on that Windwalker Warrior. I'm wondering what Zizon would lock blind if should they win this game here on Dalaran Sewers. But, I mean, it's looking like they've already got the team in checkmate unless Chaz can get a drink, which he's trying to do right now. Do they see him? Drainer's trying to get over there, dashing in to find Chaz. He finds him, stops the drink, tries to hibernate him, actually catches the hibernate. Beautifully done by Drainer. Waz in a lot of trouble as a result. If Drainer gets a Cyclone out of this, Waz knows Cyclone's a threat, so he's going to be poking Drainer and chasing him away from Chaz. Chaz sits down for another drink. Drainer jumps on top. Drainer finds him with the Vortex. It's all about stopping Chaz's mana regeneration. Drainer ping pong in between healing his team and stopping the drink at the same time. Masterfully here on game number four. Raikou and Waz both under pressure. Chaz has to make a decision on who he iron barks. He can't iron bark two people, but if he iron barks the wrong target, Zizon will switch. They do catch Nerd Rage in a stun, but he pre-defensive stanced this incoming attack. And with Iron Bark right before getting crowd controlled, Nerd Rage should be more than stable. He's trying to stay on target and develop pressure despite Method Black's attack. And it looks like he is going to be able to. Vendetta now popped as well. Although not too much pressure as a result. Chaz is trying to drink again. Jamie and Drainer are tag teaming to stop it. It's all about following Chaz on the map, keeping him in combat while still dealing damage to Raikou and Waz. If they can keep up that dance for a little bit longer, they should be able to take it. Nerd Rage under fire again. Yeah, big damage on Nerd Rage. Frozen the orb gets committed by Raikou. They're trying to get really aggressive. Iron Bark forced to be traded out by Chaz. It's Waz that's in trouble. He's in an asphyxiate stun, trying to survive, using faint, using the damage reduction. Now Nerd Rage and Jamie, they're turning their attention on Raikou. They can't let him free cast for too long. They really need to limit the amount of blizzards and frost bolts he can cast out in this matchup. Now a bash over onto Drainer. Chaz, if he can get the crowd control, maybe they can start getting some damage rolling onto Jamie. But at 9% dampening, I still feel like Jamie's a really tanky target. And once again, it's Raikou that is in trouble. Nerd Rage charges over. Ice Barrier looking to deny a lot of that incoming damage as Raikou uses Shimmer to escape. Drainer still has a massive mana lead. Chaz, is he going to be able to drink in this situation? This is the biggest thing. They're going to trade out an Ice Block from Raikou. And now he doesn't have another one for another three minutes. All right, no Ice Blocks from Method Black. Chaz, is he drinking though? No, not that much mana. This is not looking good for Method Black. Zizon looks solid here in game number four. If Nerd Rage can stay on target, Raikou and Waz are getting into that juicy execute range when a target dips below 20%. Arms Warriors can use execute, which does increased damage based on their rage and is likely to kill the target. Nerd Rage sets up the fear to try and make a big push, but now he's stunned away. Waz holding him at bay. Drainer's trying to get to the smoke bomb. No punish on the movement there, unfortunately, for Method Black. They are switching their attention now to Jamie. I think deep and dampening, definitely the Death Knight is the better target. So instead of going after Nerd Rage, they're going to be crowd controlling him. Jamie anticipates the attack, activates the anti-magic shield before any damage even hits him. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. He's trying to find ja Chaz, who's trying to drink. I think he may have at least gotten one tick off of this, which is unfortunate. Zizon had such a huge lead, and now it's even. Yeah. It looks like Jamie is going to be the main focus as he is taking quite a bit of damage. He's forced to trink it out. Anti-magic zone as well. There's a bash over on the Drainer. Can Raikou get the follow-up polymorph? Doesn't look like it. Jamie getting low, but I think it might be Raikou that's in trouble. Iron Bark gets traded out. Waz getting cleaved down as well. Raikou really struggling to get topped off right now. If Jamie and Nerd Rage can stay on target, they have so much pressure, a lot of momentum on their side. Drainer's keeping them alive, allowing them to make this offensive push. Raikou caught into a bash. He trinkets out, looking for another polymorph to slow down some damage. Kidney shot over onto Jamie. Drainer trying to avoid the incoming polymorph from Raikou. Good pressure from Nerd Rage and Jamie, forcing Waz to play defensive. He's got no evasion. Faint trying to be enough, but there's just so much damage. Waz kites away. He shadow steps back over to the water elemental, but he's in a lot of trouble. 
Is he going to be able to escape? He uses the Vanish. He has Vendetta rolling. Chaz was able to recover some mana, but I think Waz might just die. Yeah, Waz is trying to poke in and out of the fight and survive at the same time, but it's such a difficult decision to make when there's nothing really left in the tank, but they've got pressure on two targets. Nerd Rage against soloed by Raikou. Big Ray of Frost. Nerd Rage could fall. He's got cooldowns. Why isn't he using them? He's just going to die. He has Rally and Cry. He's going to press it. He waited so long to press Rally and Cry there. Now he's stunned with the Shadow step and he's gonna get crushed here was with the perfect retaliation and method black advanced to match point yeah really good game from method black but at the end there it looked like zyzon did make a couple of mistakes i think actually nerd rage triggered out of nothing we'll see on the replay if that was correct or not but method black they come through with another victory here they're 3-1 up in the series it's a best of seven one more victory will find them their second grand final in a row here z yeah and these rogue mage versus tsg games have been super close uh, especially Especially on these smaller maps, but uh, at the end of this one, they finally landed some low clones onto Jamie. They got to a point where the DK's uh, self healing wasn't super effective, and of course, Raikou landed a couple of polymorphs as well there at the end, forcing out Drainer's Trinket, and that is what secured the win as well at the end there. So, uh, nicely done. I think Nerd Rage, he has been holding on to his Diaper Sword a lot in this matchup, but I feel like this particular game, a little bit too greedy. Could have popped it a little bit sooner. Uh, sometimes it has worked out for him, though, being super greedy with it. Yeah, I mean, we've seen we were complimenting him, you know, on living low, like full blind saps onto Draenor, and then he finds somehow some way to stay alive on this arms warrior. But ultimately, it wasn't enough here. And now this series is looking like it's kind of going out of their hands and Method Black's running away with the show. I mean, that game was looking really good for them. I think they made the mistake of going after Waz for much too long. I mean, he looked like such a juicy prime target, but the problem is when you leave Raikou alone in that situation where he has no ice blocks, he was a really good target for them. I like what they were doing. They go after Raikou, and then when Waz is kind of in their way, they hit him a little bit and really tax Chaz's mana, but if they chase Waz for too long, that's when Raikou can start spamming out Polymorphs. He can spam out, you know, the big flurry combos, uh, which are really, really devastating. It's a lot of damage. I think they should have just stuck on Raikou, and that game could have looked a lot different. Yep, Zyzon, maybe they had a few different things they could have changed up in that game, but this series is slipping out of their grasp. The Grand Finals are slipping out of their grasp. Method Black look to close out the second cup. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. It's the Grand Finals of Europe. The score, 3-1 to one against, uh, against Zyzon in favor of Method Black. One game away from winning this Grand Final. It would be their second in a row of winning the Grand Finals here. They won Cup 1. They're looking to win Cup 2. Once again, Zyzon locking this TSG composition on Blades Edge Arena, but Method Black are just getting better and better at this matchup. Yeah, it's looking really good for Method Black, but honestly, Zyzon had a lot of momentum in that last game. I really feel like they just kind of fumbled at the finish line, trying to take Waz down, but he just had really good defensive maneuvers to his credit. Good backup by Raikou and Chaz. Have to see what they're going to be able to get done in this matchup. I think Zizon, once again, they're going to focus their attention over onto Raikou. It's a really back and forth series. Method Black has been doing a really good job, and they are just one game away from closing out the series and claiming the second cup in a row. I like the map selection here from Zizon on Blades of Jarena. It's difficult as a mage to tra traverse its treacherous spikiness. I think that we're going to see Raikou use the outskirts of the map if it becomes too dicey at the top of the bridge because it's very close quarters, which means the Warrior and the Death Knight can ping pong targets very easily. It's not often that we see Blade's Edge Arena selected. Big damage onto Raikou early on. Chaz is trying to deny the pressure with Iron Bark, but Raikou needs to try and escape to safety at the same time. Shadow Melt's one Gladiator's Maledict. Are they going to go for the second or the third? I'm also wondering how much impact these Gladiator's Maledicts have had overall in the matchup because initially they weren't running any. Now they're running three. Bit of a blunder there on the kidney shot for Nerd Rage. Very small and diminishing return. Chaz still getting crowd controlled, and you can see how the map is working for Zyzon. Raikou and Chaz are so close to each other, Waz as well. So as time goes on, momentum will build. And they may decide to abandon the top of the bridge here shortly if things start to get out of control. And Jamie on top of Raikou right now, trying to deny the damage. Chaz gets interrupted. This is the kind of strategy we have to see from Nerd Rage and Jamie. They go after Raikou, and if they can't hit Raikou, they still make their way over on top of him, but try to hit Waz as sort of an off target and deny a lot of his, a lot of the mana that Chaz has available, making him heal multiple targets. 
We'll have to see what they can get done. A big attempt now over on to Nerd Rage. Jamie going to be trying to deny. Anti Magic Zone gets dropped down. Brainerd full cycle, and as Nerd Rage is still getting low, there's been really good crowd control coming in from Chaz. Can they just close out the game? Nerd Rage forced to trinket out of a cyclone. Chaz looking for an additional cyclone, but Nerd Rage using the Blade Storm to immune that incoming crowd control. Really scary moment. Nerdrage commits his trinket. Now doesn't have that available for the next smoke bomb attempt that the Black has available. All right, let's see if Method Black can set up the win here. They're on match point. They could just close the series out. Zizon are counterattacking. Raikou at the moment while Chaz is out of the fight drinking, but Chaz drank to full mana, and that is important for their team. If he can maintain mana, most certainly deep into dampening, that Death Knight becomes a liability. The Death Strike certainly not potent enough, so this game could go anyone's way here. It's match point. Chaz gets stunned. He wanted to crowd control Drainer. This stun is preventing Chaz from getting to him and now allowing Drainer to prepare for the assault. Activating Iron Bark before being crowd controlled. Good predictive play there on Drainer's part. They decide to not even go for the Cyclone, knowing that that defense is active. It's unlikely they kill, so they'll save the diminishing return. Drainer is playing very far away. Looks like he may be trying to go into stealth and then engage with some crowd control. Nope, just going to be running down. Raikou now using the outskirts of the map to kite, realizing that the top of the bridge is not going to be favorable to them. So using the bottom parts of the ramp and going around in a circle or a rectangle in this case, I think is going to be the best positions for Raikou. Mana slightly in favor of Method Black, thanks to Chaz finding drinks early on. No significant cooldown advantage right now for Zizon. I would say that they are steadily falling behind. Now yeah, Raikou still trying to find some damage. Can he get it rolling over onto Jamie and Nerd Rage? Nerd Rage still with no trinket. The smoke bomb not going to be available though. Nice interrupts sniped in there by Raikou. Jamie could be in some trouble. A triple intimidating shout coming in from Nerd Rage. Does break onto Waz and Raikou. Chaz now in an asphyxiate zone as they turn their attention onto him. They're trying to slow down the incoming Cyclones. Jamie's still low. Drainer really struggling to find the healing. I think he actually sat down for a drink. Uh, it was a bit of a scary moment. Jamie got low, Nerd Edge got low, but at the end of the day, they bought enough time for Drainer to go, get out of combat, start recovering his mana by drinking, and now basically we see a complete reset. All right, complete reset for both sides here. Match point in the grand finals of the European Summer Cup number two. If Zizon somehow managed to reverse this three wins in a row, I do believe that they'd pass wildcard gaming on points. That would make them feel a lot more comfortable moving into the new patch and the rest of the season. So they need to find victory here. Whereas if Method Black win, they're just so far ahead on points overall for the entire year that I almost think it's impossible for Wildcard Gaming or even any other team to catch them. They would have to blunder the next four tournaments for that situation to happen. So Method Black are looking to potentially lock in their spot even at BlizzCon by being able to take this cup as they would just have so many points accumulated for the year over every other team. Drainer jumps in to get crowd control to try and keep Zizon alive in the tournament, but they don't have any follow-up. Jamie's actually just attacking the Druid. Chaz is going to run away. Now they can switch back to Raikou. Nerd Rage bouncing targets. This is the advantage of Blade's Edge Arena, as you can ping-pong targets so easily when one escapes, and as a result, they get Ice Block from Raikou. Chaz is probably going to want to drink and reset mana, but he can't. He's not positioned. Now they ping pong over to Waz. Pressure there. Chaz has to heal three members of the team and spend a whole bunch of mana to recover. Chaz gets caught into Asphyxiate Sun. The pressure is mounting still for Zizon. Raikou used his first ice block. Still has the cold snap available. He uses it to reset that cooldown. And now he can start waiting for that third ice block to potentially roll around. We're at 2% dampening right now. If we look at the healer's mana, Chaz is a little bit behind. Drainer has a slight lead. Vendetta gets pulled out by Waz. They're looking to get aggressive. There's a Cyclone over on a Nerd Rage. Do they have the follow-up crowd control on the Drainer? That's what they need to find right now, but unfortunately, not able to. Waz is sort of dancing around Drainer and Nerd Rage right now. Jamie and Nerd Rage are just going after Chaz. They put out a lot of pressure in this game so far. Kidney shot over onto Drainer. He's in bear form with Bark Skin. I think it's unlikely he falls in this situation, but they did manage to get the Bark Skin, which is a small victory. Small victory here for Method Black. If they want to just close this series out, I think that's a good adaptation on the map as there's limited points of line of sight. Healers are susceptible to being taken down. Zizon are trying to capitalize on that by going after Chaz, but Nerd Rage gets peeled away by Waz. Jamie can't connect. They drop the smoke bomb. They're going all in for the kill. How many more stuns do they have? They don't have any more. Nerd Rage uses Spell Reflect on very low health with Iron Bark to try and stay alive. Is it going to be enough? Dampening now at 8%, but look at the health bars of Method Black. Three members, sub 50%. Limited options for Chaz. Very low mana, but at the same time, they're pressuring Nerd Rage. It's getting to that do or die point for both teams. They're gonna have to make a choice on when to make that final push as dampening continues to rise. 
Yeah. Good pressure still on Nerd Rage. When are they going to make that final push? Really is the question. Icy Vein's rolling for Raikou, but he's forced into a very defensive situation. Jamie manages to land the Asphyxiate onto Chaz. Raikou on the run. Nerd Rage, can he get the damage that he needs? He's trying to get in range. They've managed to force out the second Ice Block. And I feel like it's unlikely at this point we see a third. I really feel like Method Black, they have to close out the game soon or Zizon's going to be walking away with game number five. Do or die on Blade's Edge Arena. Method Black just need to win one game. Zizon have to win three. That is a lot to do, especially when they're falling behind. Drainer anticipated the crowd control. He activated Iron Bark before it, but it may not be enough. Nerd Rage Spell reflects one glare's Maledict. Jamie backs him up with the Anti-Magic Zone. This purple shield, the only thing protecting Nerd Rage right now, but Waz really doesn't care about its defense. Nerd Rage going to leap over. Deny crowd control onto Trainer and hopefully get some heals. He's very low on health. Big shield from that Avatar Azerite trait on the Nerd Rage, absorbing some pretty big attacks, but now he's stunned up. Trainer tries to pick him up. He's got Innervate. He's getting a lot of free healing, maximizing his global cooldowns here to stabilize at no mana cost. But Trainer then gets Cyclone. There's no defense for Nerd Rage. It's do or die. There's no defense for Raikou either. They grip Chaz in. Nerd Rage charges forward as a warrior would do. This would be quite the warrior's death to just go for the kill or to have your life be taken. That's the only option at this point for Zizon. Bash on to Raikou with a kitty shot over on a Nerd Rage. Waz looking to reverse the pressure, but Nerd Rage is in a Cyclone. Unfortunately, a lost opportunity there for Method Black to start developing some momentum, but Chaz really had no choice. He doesn't have much mana left to work with. They have to try to avoid as much damage as possible. Waz isn't necessarily the greatest target right now. He has a lot of his defense. I think for Zizon, it's going to be a one-way pain train onto Raikou for the rest of the game. Chaz uses Iron Bark, the last little bit of his mana, to keep Raikou alive. But if Jamie and Nerd Rage can stay on target, I think Raikou could fall very shortly in this match. Kidney shot over onto Nerd Rage. Drainer denies with the Iron Bark as they make their off final offensive push onto Raikou. I don't know if he's going to be able to escape. We're at 22% dampening. Chaz is really going to struggle to heal through this. All right, Chaz, what are you going to do? You're totally tapped. Drainer still has a little bit left in the tank. Raikou's low on health. There's no way they're going to be able to drink. He's trying to, maybe? Chaz is sprinting around. What's he trying to get done here? He, they stun Nerd Rage. Nerd Rage triggered. Nerd Rage knows this game is over. If they can get aggressive, two targets so dangerously low. Waz evasions, but Raikou doesn't have that luxury, and he gets absolutely crushed. Zizon take game number five. We're going to game number six here in the grand finals of the European Summer Cup, number two. Well, we did predict that this series would go all the way, and Zizon aren't done fighting just yet. They do bring us back to a two to three game five there. Still obviously heavily disadvantaged since Meta Black will now have two counts picks in a row if Zizon want to go for that victory. But obviously, it's still nice to see them fighting for their chance of winning this first grand final. Yeah, absolutely. And the Blade's Edge was kind of a big deal, I think, in this matchup. Uh, I think it's just nice, not just because it's small, but uh, just because you can jump down and up again uh, if you are in trouble, you know, if Drainer is crowd controlled. And another thing as well uh, that we haven't really talked about is the fact that Tolveron Arena is still open and we might see the Windwalker Mage come in on Tolveron Arena uh, in the next matchup. But here, towards the end, Raikou, once again, no ice blocks here. Same, similar situation to in the previous match, but uh, it is Waz that falls, uh, but they just get so much pressure here by going on to Raikou, getting him completely, getting Chess completely out of mana. And then, of course, when Raikou is completely topped like this, they will probably just do a swap over here to uh, Waz and see what they can do. A lot of cleave damage going out, forcing out Waz's evasion. And, you know, a nice little fear there as well. Actually, Raikou does go down there at the end. And Waz just dropping a little bit lower there from the cleave damage. Yeah, it was a clean setup, you know, the grip into the fear. I think they actually forced Chaz's uh, trinket with a reflected cyclone as well. So Nerd Rage really putting the team on his back. We've seen how great he's been on this warrior. And I actually think it's just fantastic. We should give a shout out to Nerd Rage because we haven't seen warriors succeeding during this matter. Obviously, this is the fast final tournament, the final day before we head into patch 8.2K just uh, or 8.2. Just how great That's is it to see rating. Nerd Rage 8.2K? <laughs> yeah, That's kind of the rating Nerd Rage is sitting on right now. But I just want to say how impressive is it? to see Nerd Rage. How good does he have to be playing for them to pick him over a Windwalker here? Um, I don't know. I feel like the Windwalker is maybe easier to kill before dampening, but I, I don't know. I actually think the Windwalker might be better overall in the matchup I'm trying than to the get you to say that Nerd Rage you, is you're trying, to warrior yeah, you're trying to hype me I'm up for the Warrior, you. but I'm not on the Warrior train. I'm not on the Warrior train. I think the Windwalker 
statistically would be better uh, in this given matchup, but Nerd Rage's uh, competence on Warrior, I would say, is probably much higher than his Windwalker, and it's probably higher than maybe even any other Warrior. I would love to see like a TSG mirror or something between Blizzo and Nerd Rage and kind of settle out who are, who is the best Warrior because we haven't so we seen agree a lot. That the best Warriors from Europe, though. We've got what? We agree I, th I think that's what Super T is saying. It's right? confusing. Like, Saxon's so, going to get mad at me now. <laughs> I, I'm trying to like translate for you guys what Super T is saying here because like his competence is higher than others. <laughs> what he's trying to say is that Nerd Rage is flipping awesome on this warrior and he's playing fantastic. Flipping off. Whether it's going to be enough uh, to beat Meta Black here is a good question because Meta Black, they will now have two counter picks. They have the map. You mentioned it. Tolveron is still available in the pool. It's looking tough even with that victory for Zyzon. I mean, it certainly is. If we go to Tolveron, yeah, which there it is. Like they are, I feel like Zizon, <laughs> when they played that matchup into the Windwalker Frostman Restoration Druid, it did not look good for them. So I don't know. Zizon on this larger map, maybe they could try to set up playing the Lock Shaman Druid once again if they decide to go back to that. But I don't even feel like that this map's that great because it's going to be easier for Method Black to lock in the Rogue Mage Druid and kind of stall out the game for a little bit longer, which we've seen in the past plays into their strategy and plays into their advantage. So the big map, not necessarily the best as Zizon has to be the team, even as the Elemental Shaman Warlock to push in and get aggressive in the matchup. And I don't think Tolveron Arena is necessarily the best for that. So they're in a really difficult spot. I feel like no matter what they pick, Method Black has an answer. Yeah, it, it does feel like that, especially on this map. If Zyzon were able to win this, guys, it would be absolutely incredible. If Zyzon could do it, I think they thoroughly will have deserved uh, the title of Grand Grand Champion here in Europe for Cup 2. But obviously, they've still got a way to go there, considering their options right now, which some, isn't something we've really had to see from them. They've been pretty confident with what they've been locking in uh, throughout today, but this is the first time they're really up against the odds. Yeah, well, they have to pick their poison here. On one hand, you have a really nice map for, you know, the Lock, Ellie, and the uh, rest of Druid. So it is tempting, but you've also lost that matchup a lot of times. On the other end, you didn't really get to see how the Windwalker Mage plays out properly against your melee cleave. And they're going to go with that. Uh, I think this is a smart pick by Zyzon. Uh, you know, there was a bit of a blunder previously on Ashermane's fault. So uh, seeing how it plays out uh, in a potentially longer game against Method Black's Windwalker Mage, I think is the right call to make here. You don't really know what happens, you know, in uh, dampening. If you can take down maybe Waz on that Windwalker or uh, if you can set something up there. So uh, I think I think this is the, it's a risky pick, but it's the least risky one. I, one of the things I noticed about Zyzon is they really go full defense when they play this composition too. Like there's no Dark Simulacrum or anything like that. They're just full on defensive talents. Is there any potential, like, would it be valuable for them to go for a little bit more offense, do you think, on a map like this? Or do they just have to play to live? It's, it's a difficult situation to be in. I mean, we saw it early on. They were, were running the Gladiator's badge. So yeah, that's a good example as well. Yeah, no Maledix, right? Yeah, no Maledix. They had a little bit more versatility. And you could say that maybe that's a little bit more offensive without the Maledic, but I think it's also a lot more defensive as yeah. well, having the extra 200 versatility. That versatility really adds up, especially if that's the main stat you're stacking. So they are making some gear adaptations. I'm not sure where they could really sacrifice, though. Like, I'm not sure what they could really change up uh, what trinkets they would really want to run in order to get more pressure in this matchup because it just feels like it's so difficult for Nerd Rage on the Warrior to, I mean, if Meth Black goes for the Windwalker Frost Mage again, uh, who do you go after? I mean, yeah. you go after a monk, <laughs> you leave a free casting Frost Mage. Disaster. You go after the mage, you're just getting Ring of Peace, you're getting snared, and Ooh. Meth Black, they're actually going to be locked. Interesting. I think, I think that's night. a mistake. Do we like this? I actually uh, think this you... is a mistake for Meth Black, to be honest. Yeah. Everyone dislikes it? Why? Well, if you wait for, if you do the infamous Colo TM <laughs> strategy, you can just wait for the dampening and then you can jump on the Warlock. Where is he going to go? It's a Warlock. You have a Windwalker. Demonic super Circle. Mobile. Even with Demonic Circle, I, are you really going to get away from a DK and a Warrior? This, this, the is, reason, this is why I don't like it. Windwalker, Frost Mage, mm -hmm. Resto Druid seemed impossible for Zyzon <laughs> to beat, and they already won extremely convincingly. Yep. Why change it up? Why risk it? Yeah, 
I think that's that's fair logic. And I think Zika also makes the fair point that we saw the Mage Lock Druids losing to these kind of turtle strategies, then go all in at about 40% dampening. Is this method Black picking their poison Maybe. again here? Are they not learning from their mistakes? Because they got reverse swept by ABC, of course, at the spring finals. Now they lock in the composition again. This is the first time we've seen it since then. I actually would have liked Ellie Shaman more. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously just playing Ellie Shaman, that, then there's no vulnerabilities. And I don't know what Drainer or Nurridge could ever attack, but <laughs> I was going to say maybe it's just Swapsy wanting to say, hello, I'm still on the team. Yeah, he like, hasn't played since yeah. spring, has he? There's been a lot of Rogue Mage Druid, Windwalker Mage Druid, but, you know, I'm still here. I want to say hello. But I think the Destruction Warlock, I don't know why. I feel like Swapsy is obsessed with the Destruction Warlock for some reason. He loves his Destruction Warlock. I'm not sure that he's convinced us that we love his Destruction Warlock just yet, but maybe he'll have the opportunity to prove us wrong, yeah. There. Yeah, uh, well, this is an opportunity to prove us wrong. It's still their counter pick. Like, they still have to have fair odds in this matchup. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's not a bad matchup, but I feel like there is a weakness that you can potentially exploit there, whereas, like you said, with an Ellie Shaman, I don't see the same weakness. Uh, with the Windwalker Mage, I don't see the same weakness either, so uh, I feel like uh, the Warlock, the lack of mobility can really be exploited if Zyzon decides to just, you know, stay back behind the pillar, don't really get attacked too much, just stay back, don't do too much, and then jump in when you have a little bit of dampening and just do an all-in uh, push on the Warlock where you just stay in, you use your cooldowns to just stick on the target and not get forced back, and then you can actually kill him and just drain Chaz's mana in just one push. So uh, that is a weakness that they probably will exploit. Um, the other thing is... There's no more big maps. Yeah, this this is the last big map they used. They, they have Mook and Bala still. Well, I, I guess, guess they, yeah. That's kind of awkward for a lot of these teams, right? Yeah, I mean, Mook and Bala is also one of those maps where you can kind of just sit back in the starting mm -hmm. room and play a game of chicken, or you can. Like, there's so many different spots on that map that you can use to make basically a smaller map. Uh, that I feel like it's a big map, but it's not really it's one like that teams. It's like little maps essentially. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's like I mean, a little puzzle. <laughs> it's like a little puzzle. I mean, we're getting a little bit puzzled by this blind pick from Method Black, so I guess it's, <laughs> it's fitting. But it wouldn't be the European Grand Finals without some strange picks. These Europeans, they do love it. Even us, you know, we're playing on the European ladder all the time, and we're just like, well, the Windwalker Mage just won super convincingly, so it seems really weird that Method Black would go for this. At least maybe don't use your best map for it, because, I mean, if it doesn't work out, now where are they going to take us? So we'll have to see. But, I mean, for Zyzon, they're probably really happy here, because they're like, well, they were dreading the Windwalker Mage. They probably would even dread the Rogue Mage on a map of this size. But the Mage Lock, maybe they'll have an opportunity here. It's going to be really interesting to see how they play this out. Of course, if Method Black do win, then they're the champions. Method Black in a confident position, although substituting in Swapsy, we're questioning it on the desk. It really does feel like the Elemental Shaman would have been the safest pick overall in terms of comp advantage. But the most obvious one was the Windwalker because it already worked. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see how it works for Method Black. Maybe they just win the game instantly. Maybe Zyzon has no chance in this matchup. We'll have to see what can happen. And Swaps is actually going to be playing the Demonic Circle. So he has a little bit more mobility in this matchup, not opting for that Mortal Coil. But you can see what Zyzon's going to be doing. They want no part of the midfield. They want to be hiding as far away as possible. And the good thing about this Demonic Circle is Swapsy, if he was not running it, he would be very susceptible to be getting gripped in like Raikou is. And that is when Nerd Rage and Jamie could have high up time to keep up that consistent damage. Now that he has the Demonic Circle, he can basically trade one for one with that Death Grip to portal away. Raikou getting tunneled down in the matchup so far. A little bit of burst damage incoming. But Method Black does manage to stabilize, and I feel like this is one of those games where Zyzons, they're going to be sitting at this pillar, and it could go on for some time. I'm making a prediction that this is the highest dampening we've ever seen in the summer season. Higher than 58%? Significantly higher Give than 58%. Significantly number. higher. Let's hear it. 80%. 80%. I don't think so. I, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I think this is going to 80% dampening, and I'm going to make the crazy assumption here that Zyzon are going to kill Raikou. 80% dampening, Raikou is going to die. That's my prediction right now. I, right. I'm I not just, betting anything on it. I just want to make a crazy prediction so it's, it's amazing if it's right, okay? <laughs> yeah, if that's, it's right. That's the only reason. We'll have to see if that comes true. We'll have to see what Zazon's going to be able to get done. I think Method Black with this composition, they're going to be feeling pretty confident to push in at this point. They can tunnel down Drainer. They can throw down the Frozen Orb, the Reign of Fire, the Blizzard. 
put out a lot of AoE spread pressure, and it could tax Drainer's mana quite a bit to heal through it. So far, that hasn't been the case. Nerd Rage is going to be putting some damage over onto Swapsy, and Swapsy has to be careful. He can't be too far away from his Demonic Circle. He is slowly walking towards it. Jamie keeping Chains of Ice on him, making it difficult for him to get in line of sight to actually get some damage rolling. Chaz gets caught into an Asphyxiate stun. Nerd Rage, Jamie, and Drainer, they're all just running away as much as they can. They don't want to have to deal with Method Black at this point of the game. They really have to go for that late game stall tactic if they want to have any sort of edge in this matchup. Swapsy used his uh, Demonic Circle a bit aggressively, so they're getting uptime on Swapsy right now. Really taking it to him. That Demonic Gateway out in the midfield is going to allow him to escape. Chaos Bolt, Spell Reflected, I believe. That's coming right back at Swapsy, but didn't even look like it really tickled him. Now we see Zizon positioned at the pillar, and that's the main goal. Zizon just to stay alive with as much mana and cooldowns as possible to make an overwhelming push and dampening. That is their main strategy. On this map, if they try to fight in midfield, they're exposed to crowd control and they're exposed to potential death. So you don't want to be out in the open if those are the two, those are basically the only two results of being out in the open, especially before dampening. So they are going to be playing at the pillar for as long as possible. The advantage is with the Windwalker Mage is that if they do this strategy, the Windwalker just stuns all three of them and Fist of Fury is all three of them. So they can't get away with this strategy, which is why I think the Windwalker Mage would have been safer overall. Even with the Elemental Shaman, there's just more instant cast stuns with the Lightning Lasso. I think that would be very important. Chaz could potentially be maximizing his Feral Affinity a little bit better as well. Cubsy will see when he is running this Feral Affinity is constantly restealthing, jumping in and landing stuns for the team. Chaz hasn't really been doing that. I think it is an important part of the formula. Chaz is also not running Master Shapeshifter, so he's not getting an extra 25% damage when he's in cat form. This might be a lack of experience on the composition overall because Cloud9 almost certainly would be running the Feral Affinity Master Shapeshifter, adding in stuns, and really punishing the positioning of Zizon, but with this strategy that Method Black are employing, it's like just the ultimate dampener strat. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I mean, it's working so far. So far, they've taken literally no damage. They've been completely safe the entire game. Anti-Magic Zone trades out. And that's similar to the kind of smoke bomb that we saw from Colo in North America not so long ago, where you're just trading out these big defensive cooldowns in order to stay alive and stall out the game for as long as you can. Because like we said, it is going to take dampening for Jamie and Nerd Rage to make a move over onto Swapsy. Drainer actually getting swapped to, though. A big attempt! Drainer could just fall. What is he going to do? He trinkets out Shadow Meld Ironbark. Still hasn't used the bar scene. Comes up now. The Chaos Bolt lands, and Metha Black playing aggressive. Chaz with that Feral Affinity cat form pushing in. Capital F-E-E-D. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 80, what were you saying about 80% yeah, damage? Well, not if, they, not yeah. if they throw. First ever. time game ever. Not if they throw. <laughs> No? Okay, well, fair enough. Commentator curse, be, okay? That's going to be the grand finals in favor of Method Black. That was actually kind of a crazy setup considering they weren't even running the Mortal Crow, right? They were running the, yeah. the port instead. So really crazy all-in coming in from Method Black, showing that they have been putting the practice in to the Mage Lock Druid. Whether or whether or not Drainer could have survived is a, a question for another day, I suppose. Maybe we can rewatch it here, and see. Well, I mean, they still had the Infernals, they still had the Dark Soul, they still had a lot of cooldowns here, and the beautiful thing is they forced out the Bark Skin here with the Orb of Raikou, and uh, this anti-magic zone here, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say Cervantes probably wouldn't have used that there, and then uh, we can see here, you know, the Blizzard is coming in, there's a lot of damage, uh, you know, being set up here, Swapsy has his Dark Soul active, and there's the Gateway in, and the Frozen Orb, there's the Rake Stun, gonna be followed up by the Bash, Drainer uh, could easily have trinketed here, and he doesn't, instead he just sits through everything, actually trinkets after the stun, gets re Rake Stun there by Chaz's Shadow Meld, and he goes down through the Bark Skin, through the iron bark defense there at the end and uh, it's a little bit of a throwaway yeah i mean the anti-magic so <laughs> i think you, you caught it out right it was probably yeah. one of these situations of like oh we're just gonna dampen them completely doesn't respect the fact that infernal all-in is coming at the end of that one but method black are your champions for the second week in a row ladies and gents that's the final cup of 8.1.5 for europe all these teams will now have a two-week vacation whilst they figure out patch 8.2 and come back into uh, cup three hopefully on the same level of strength that we've seen from them as they've figured out this patch obviously zizon also going to be incredibly happy with this performance the top two definitely nothing that they'll they would have been unhappy with coming into this i mean absolutely 
absolutely not. And they were improving against Meta Black. I feel like a lot of those games could have gone in Zyzalon's favor, except the last one. That one was kind of a complete disaster. Yeah. But honestly, great job by Zyzalon. I expect in the next patch, 8.2, that they're going to be coming potentially even stronger. Yeah, I mean, that's something that we'll look for them. These are one of these teams that just seem to have all the options available to them. You know, Mercy's been looking great. Jamie's playing multiple classes. Yes, maybe a couple of mistakes in that final game, but Nerd Rage also, like these guys, all of them, all four members doing fantastically. So now we have those and we can have the points, uh, the standings basically from today that we have seen. Obviously, we've only had two cups so far in the summer season, uh, and that means that we have two teams, actually three teams tying for the third place. So this is really Crazy. open up, you know, going into patch 8.2. Obviously, Method Black are by far, by far and away the best team in Europe based on these two cups.